Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne. I got a video for that. Kimball, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. Today, I'm going to be discussing the VA's G14 classified regulation as it pertains to establishing service connection for chronicity. Make sure you stick around. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, Dwayne, why are you doing a video on chronicity? The reason why is because as a former VA Raider, I've seen several third-party VA examiners deny veterans service connection for this, and the veterans get the CMP exam or get a copy of it, and they have no clue what chronicity is. So Today, I'm gonna to break it down for you, so let's go ahead and get into it, slide number one. Here in slide number one, this is the M21-1 manual reference, I call it the G14 VA classified regulation, establishing direct service connection based on chronicity. Now, chronicity, what is chronicity? Long lasting, constant, okay? Means basically after service. What is been going on with that condition since service okay now keep in mind a lot of us did not go to sick call while we were in the military and if you didn't you need to be watching this video all right so think about this also when you get out of service it's already been grain ingrained in you in service not to go to sick call not to seek medical treatment so when you get out does that change no how many people go to the doctor every time something hurts very seldom for a lot of us, okay? So it says, when a chronic disease listed under 38 CFR 3.309 subpart A is shown in service. Now, that regulation is the what? One year presumptive, like Camp Lejeune presumptive, Agent Orange presumptive, Gulf War presumptive. It is the one year presumptive, okay? We're gonna skip down to where I have chronicity highlighted in red. To establish SC, service connection, of the 38 CFR 3.309 subpart B, I'm gonna cover that in a later slide, based on the chronicity of a disease shown in service, the evidence must include. And I'm not gonna read those two bullet comments, but you could pause it right here and read them yourself, okay? Now, what I like about this particular M21 manual reference and any other M21 manual reference that has an example. Okay, here we go. Right knee degenerative joint disease, arthritis. Guess what? Arthritis is on that one year presumptive list. First began and was diagnosed during active duty. That's a nugget, active duty service connection, not years later at the VHA hospital and was confirmed by x-ray imaging. How do you know that? Because you've already watched my videos, you've already attended my training, where I stress, get a copy of your VA claims folder. The veteran claims service connection for right knee arthritis. That's the personal statement, short, direct, and to the point. 10 years after separation. Medical records dated since separation from service are slight minimal he or she doesn't have that many okay for right knee complaints or treatment and there is no evidence of post-service right knee injury now you may have no records okay but the VA is just using this as an example and if you say Dwayne well what about I only had 10 pages, I only had two pages. I'm gonna tell you to go back and watch this video again because I discussed it in the video. This is just an example, all right? The analysis, right knee degenerative joint disease is a chronic disability, listen under what? 3.309 cell part A to one year presumptive. The in-service evidence of arthritis diagnosed by x-ray establishes, establishes onset and chronicity of the claim condition. There is no evidence of an intercurrent cause for the right knee arthritis. Now, we all know direct service connection, you need three elements, current diagnosis, 
Lincoln Service, and Nexus. The Nexus letter includes what in it? The medical opinion and rationale. The result, the clear onset of a chronic disability in service satisfies the Nexus element for direct service connection. I'm gonna read it again. The clear onset of chronic disability in service satisfies the Nexus element for direct service connection. I just told you, you need three elements. And they're telling here what satisfies one of those elements. And service connection can be established under 38 CFR 3.30B without a medical opinion. That's the nugget, people. That's the nugget. That is why it's so important to get a copy of your claims file. Stop filing things in the dark. Stop filing things, throwing something up against the wall and hope it sticks. Stop going out and getting a lawyer and saying, oh, my lawyer is going to help me win. Whatever you put on that claim form, it has to fall into what we're talking about. Not all the time, but this is just one example. Okay, let's keep going. Slide number two. Okay, now, this M21-1 was kind of big, so I had to break it up, all right? It says, notes, when the finding of chronicity is in question, whoo, evidence of continuity is required to establish service connection for conditions, okay? So continuity, chronicity and continuity. Basically, probably had something in service, you've been out a while, documentation from then to now, okay? But again, you can still make that argument that a lot of people didn't go get treated in service on multiple occasions. Some people did because they lived on sick call, right? But some didn't. That just didn't change since we been out of service, all right? And if it really comes down to it, then you can start raising what? The reasonable doubt rule, all right? Let's keep going. A careful review of the evidence may reveal that chronic disability from a condition had its onset during active duty service, not 20 visits at your local VA medical center after service, and has chronically persisted from active service to present. Oh, there we go. Even when service medical providers did not conclude that there was residuals, of continuation of disease or injury. Okay, so those terms, continuation, persistent from active duties to present, they're talking about chronicity and continuity, all right? Now, for any disability not listed under 38 CFR 3.309A, uh, service connection must be established under 38 CFR 3.309, I'm sorry, 3.303A. We're not gonna cover those, we're gonna cover B, all right? now. Look at the reference, 38 CFR, which we're about to talk about, and you got a court case that you can go out, read, and do your research. Okay, the last slide, 38 CFR 3.309, subpart B, principles relating to service connection. Now, there is another part to this, A, which I already said I wasn't going to cover it, chronicity and continuity. With chronic disease, shown as such in service or within the presumptive period under 3.307 so as the so as to permit findings of service connection all right let's jump down to the bottom here continuity of symptom symptomology is required only where the condition noted during service or in the presumptive period is not in fact shown to be chronic or where the diagnosis of chronicity may be legitimately questioned. When the fact of chronicity in service is not adequately supported, then a showing of continuity after discharge is required to support the claim. When the fact of chronicity in service is not adequately supported, let's just say no x-ray evidence or something, right? Then a showing of continuity after service after discharge is required to support the claim. Continuation of treatment, okay? Now, I know that's confusing. I waited maybe 24, 48 hours before I even decided to do this video because I said it might be a little bit confusing. So the first part, 
is documented service, the arthritis of the right knee in that example, okay? It's on the one-year presumptive list. You have slight medical evidence after service. In this case, what they're saying, it still can be service-connected without a nexus, okay? So if they deny it, what is the argument on a high-level review? I just gave it to you. You have to argue fact the law. What are you arguing? The M21-1 manual reference that establishes direct service connection due to chronicity. Also, 38 CFR, what? 3.309 subpart B. And what is the other 38 CFR? 38 CFR 3.30 B sub, I'm sorry, 3.30 subpart B in the court case that it gave you on the first slide. This is how you win the high level review. A lot of veterans just say, I'll just go to high level review. Well, what are you talking about on high level review? Now, the information I just gave you, you could argue fact the law, but it starts with that claims folder, okay? So that's the chronicity part. But let's just say, because subpart 3.303, subpart B states, if chronicity is in question, okay, as to confirmation in service, now they can't establish, establish it due to chronicity, they have to establish it due to continuity. You have gotten treatment on several occasions outside of service. Now, let's just say you've been out 10 years, the first five years, you didn't get any treatment. Hey, you see in this video, you do your intent to file, and then you start going to the doctor, getting that evidence, building that continuity, because it doesn't qualify under the one year presumptive. So you can't get it due to chronicity. So now what you're doing, you're going to get this evidence. You're going to get treated. You're building up this evidence, this evidence, this evidence. So if they deny it, you're not arguing chronicity. You are arguing continuity because you did the intent to file over a course of six to eight, 10, 12 months. While you already submitted that intent to file, you have gotten continuous treatment. Now, I know this may be confusing. This is where you invest the time, watch this video again. You may not fit into this category, but if you do, now you know how to move forward with your claim. With that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and please don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.